I could quit school and get a job. The hell with that. You're not quitting school. Now we'll make out. I'll get a job. I mean, I'm not exactly over the hill, you know. Mm, you're telling me. I got the best looking mom in town. Why, thank you, sonny boy. Welcome to the Blind Rage Podcast. This is Brandon Ford. And this is Tony the Tiger, the Thunder from Down Under. Oh, you didn't have anything this week? <sighs> Nothing funny. Not that that's ever stopped me before. <laughs> oh, it certainly hasn't. <laughs> um, so this week, we are doing something a little different on the Blind Rage Podcast. We are doing our very first porno movie. And this is something that I've wanted to do for a while, but I wanted to do one that had some cachet or some sort of cult status. So we are doing Taboo from 1980, starring Kay Parker and Mike Ranger. And because if you're listening to this on YouTube, there will not be any background audio from the movie. <laughs> so there will be I, two I can do cuts the background of this. Noise. It's, it's my leg. <laughs> oh God! So there will be there will be an R-rated version and an NC-17 or a triple X version of this episode. Uh, which you can find on the podcast platform. So if you want to hear the movie audio and uh, while we're talking about the scenes, you can find that on Google Play or Apple Podcasts or fucking Overcast or whatever that thing's called. Um, but yeah, on, on YouTube there will be no movie audio. Um, You'll just have to come with so, us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but before we get into that I'm just going to get the plugs quickly out of the way and I've decided that I'm not going to encourage people to subscribe to my Amazon author page anymore because I have subscribed to a few author pages and I haven't gotten any notifications so I don't even know if that's a thing anymore <laughs> so but nevertheless Tony did you know that I have books? Did you know I that? did. I did in uh, ebook and um, audio format, and even in tactile. Tactile, yes. Yeah, you can hardcover, yes. paperback, yes. Um, and I write horror and suspense fiction, which you can find in physical form on Amazon.com by typing in Brandon Ford. You could also find my author page there. You could also find several of my titles in audiobook format by going to Audible or Audible.com or the Audible app and typing in Brandon Ford. Um, if you don't already, please follow me on Instagram at writer Brandon Ford. You can also follow me on both Twitter and Letterboxd at Brandon Ford. You can follow Tony on Letterboxd at Tony underscore the underscore bear. If you're listening to this on YouTube, please don't forget to give this episode a like and to subscribe to the channel. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, critiques, suggestions, recommendations, please feel free to email me directly at blindragepod81 at gmail.com. Don't forget to drop by the official Blind Rage Podcast Facebook page to like and subscribe. Last and most importantly, please don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the Blind Rage Podcast on your preferred podcasting platform. So, before we get into Taboo, which I know you are chomping at the bit 
to watch again. <laughs> what have you have you seen anything good recently? Um, I haven't really been watching much and nothing good. Uh, I watched a movie on Netflix called The Gray Man uh, with uh, Ryan Gosling. Oh yeah, I, I yeah, I've been meaning to check that out. Was it good? I did not like it. Uh, <laughs> oh, I just uh, <laughs> um, something I find with a few Netflix movies is that. Uh, I kind of wish that they would just follow a regular formula of storytelling. This one had a bit, a bit of back and forth, and the, and then finally got into a story. But I didn't really find it all that interesting. Krista, uh, the other gentleman, Chris, whatever, <laughs> was cu- cute. You know, he had his mo. Um, I forget his last name because there's so many famous Chris's at the moment. It's not Chris Pine or Hemsworth. It's yeah, Chris Evans. <sighs> Oh, so he plays the baddie, and um, and he's got a mohawk, mustache. Oh, you said mo, a mo, yeah, a mustache. Uh, the other thing I don't like that. Oh, it's not... <laughs> I like him with a beard. I think he looks really good with a full yeah. beard. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Um, he was in a movie. He's in one of my favorite science fictions called Sunshine. And at the start, he's got a full beard, and then he shaves. And I'm like, oh, who, when, where did this character come from? Because <laughs> he looks completely different to me. And then it took me a he second does. to go, oh, it's it's him again. <laughs> I think he's he's very he's very attractive, mm. regardless. But I think he looks very um, a lot cuter with the beard. I think he had it, a beard in Fantastic it really suits Four, him. didn't he? Or I could be wrong. I don't watch those movies. Oh, no. There was a very cute scene where he uh, lands in uh, snow and it like is all naked. <laughs> Something. <laughs> oh. He wrote and I think directed an indie movie that was kind of like um, Before Sunrise. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I've heard of that. In that yeah. Ethan Hawke movie. Yeah. Um, it was kind of like that. Uh, with it was like central centered around two characters, a guy and a girl, and their night together. Um, it was called "Before I Go" or "Before We Go," something like that. That's the uh, sequel. It's like a wow. The sequel was be very after good. I go. Was it, <laughs> wasn't very good, yeah. but he had the beard in it, and he was very very cute. Yeah. And the other thing I've been watching, and this is a very Australian thing. Uh, we've got a reality show called My Kitchen Rules, <laughs> which is just about home chefs, but it's got a very cute French judge in there. So uh, that's Ooh, been in French. Manu Fidel. Oh, nice. And how about yourself, Brandon? Well, today I watched Orphan First Kill. Oh, did you enjoy that? I did. I thought it was good. I didn't think it was good as as Orphan, but I thought it was good because there is a twist about halfway through the movie that you really don't see coming. Okay. Um, or at least I didn't. And um, so I'm under the impression that the actress who plays Esther does have dwarfism. Because she's still playing a child. Yeah. She is quite a short, like, quite a petite girl. Mm. The actress. I noticed her voice was a bit different, um, but she's playing, she's, she's supposed to be playing, like, nine. Yeah, yeah. Still, or, or ten. So, I, I can only assume that she has whatever the character has. Okay. Because she's like 25 Psychopathic tendencies. <laughs> she has those too, yeah. But it was good. Yeah, but when um, did the first orphan I, come out? I think uh, 2009. Yeah, so I think she was... How old was she then? I don't think she... Well, if she's 25 now, 26 now, she would have been like 13. Um, yeah, she was supposed to be... Mm. She, her kids I thought she was it. older. That's As, old. Esther was... Yeah, no good. Esther was supposed to be nine, so. But um, generally, I don't really care for Julia Stiles, but <laughs> uh, I thought she did well. Yeah. I 
I had no idea. There's a son, a teenage son. I never, I don't know who he was. I never heard of him. I didn't know who most of the cast was. Julia Stiles was the only standout. Yeah, which is for me. Yeah. Um, I don't know who the who the hell the husband was. Um, was she his beard? But, <laughs> well, he had a beard. Okay. Um, but yeah, he. I don't. I really don't want to say um, too much about it because I don't want to spoil anything. No, I, I was actually but, surprised I mean, when it came out because for some reason I was expecting it later in the year and then suddenly I see, oh, it's out today. <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't know when it was coming out either, but um, I was glad um, I was glad to have... I, I just happened to be looking for things on the Audio Vault website because I'm still hoping to find... Uh, men. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you should try Growler. Huh? You should try Growler. Growler? Yeah, to find men. No. No, I don't want to do that. Uh, you know you know, I'm all about Scruff, baby. Scruff Pit Crew. <laughs> That's an old um, reference. No, but I... I... Huh, I don't want to make the same mistake I made with X um, and that was buying the Blu-ray before I'd actually seen the movie and the Blu-ray doesn't even have the audio description on it Yeah. so I had to get the audio described version from Audio Vault um, but I know that there is an audio described version of Men because you can buy it on Amazon Prime and it does say that it, it is audio described Yeah. so I just have to wait for someone to upload it to Audio Vault. Mm -hmm. But, um, yes, Orphan First Kill, I, I recommend. Um, again, it wasn't as good as the first one, but it was enjoyable. Um, and, I mean, you do know how it's going to end because they tell you how it ends in Orphan. Because they tell you where she came from and what happened to the family she was with before, yeah. so you you do know. Yeah. Um, but there is a tw there is a another twist. Yeah, yeah. Um. Because how but, how um, old was her character in Orphan? She was quite old in that one. Nah. Nine. No, she wasn't. She had she, yes, she, she was. was old. She was older. She was nine. That's why she kept wearing the. Scarves. Oh, you mean in you mean in reality? No. Uh, Thirty-two. Sorry? What? No, the uh, the character of the girl was an older lady. Yeah, thirty two. Yeah, yeah. But she was she was playing off as nine. Yes. But she was yeah she was thirty two. Yeah. And so, how old is she in Orphan's first kill? Um. I think they say 30, because okay. it's supposed to be like two years before. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's Orphan. what I was trying to get at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not like as if showing her from a very young age. But... Mm -mm. No, it, it, um, it pretty much <clears throat> is centered around what happened right before Orphan. Yeah. So... Um, so yeah, there's that. But I know how you, much you enjoy Orphan, so <laughs> I think you should give it a... Well, they've a got such up. daddy issues. Yes, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. But speaking of daddy issues, mm -hmm. or mommy issues... Your mommy complex. Uh, well, that would be an Oedipus complex. Mm. Certainly going from the nipple to the bottle. Okay. <laughs> going to the nipple from something else. <laughs> you know, oh, actually, maybe, maybe I shouldn't say on here. <laughs> you what? I was going to say something, but then I thought, maybe I shouldn't say it on here. <laughs> you can say whatever you want, baby cakes. I went swimming the other day. And I'm not really, you know, I don't really look around, but I saw, I think, one of the hugest penises I've ever seen. <laughs> okay. 
Tell me everything. No, like, and it was only a split. No, like, I, like it was to the point that I thought it was an injury. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I just had a glance and then sort of left a bit confused. Mm-hmm. That's all. So you were kind of, um, you were kind of jarred and, uh... Had lockjaw, yeah. And, you were... <laughs> <laughs> and this was in the locker room, I suppose. Yes. And did he catch you looking? Oh, I don't... I hope not. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, because it wasn't my intention, Dirty. you know. It's not really something that I... But it was Filthy right in my face. Leering pig. It was right in your face. Well, the next... The next, like, bench over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Shall we get on to some, some cinematic penis instead? I suppose. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, so we're going to watch Taboo, and I have no idea where you can watch this. So. In your, in your fever fucking, dreams. <laughs> probably um, Pornhub or something. All right. Here we go. Three, two, one, play. <laughs> I really don't like how this begins right away with the sex scene. Well, um, it lets people know what they're watching. <laughs> oh, I, I think people know what they were watching, okay. Um, I found some interesting nuggets, because this... The source that we're watching is from the Vinegar Syndrome Blu-ray DVD combo. Um, the first thing I want to say is the audio is atrocious. I don't know if, if they even bothered remastering it, but it sounds horrible. Yeah. Um, which is probably a good thing because I don't really don't want the audio to be crystal clear in a movie like this. Well, yeah, they had some uh, very specific audio scenes. Yes, and remember, I was I was trying to tell you at at one point that it sounded like it was ADR'd. Yeah, because it didn't yes, sound yeah. natural. I don't understand why me. she doesn't just close her eyes if she can't. <laughs> She's not like with the lights on. <laughs> That's why you got eyelids. Um, mm. oh, she's a bit of a prude. <sighs> Lord. Um, but what was I saying? Um, We're talking about ADR. You threw me off. No, I was talking. I was going to say something about the car. Oh, um, there's a bunch of commentaries on the vinegar syndrome edition. Some of them, I think, were taken from an earlier release and there are some new ones and there's one with Kay Parker and she's just watching the movie by herself and it's insanely boring because there are these huge gaps where she doesn't say a fucking word yeah and there's one with her and she's being moderated by um Joe something or other who uh runs vinegar syndrome there's another with Cardi Stevens and Helene. Um, yeah, or, or whatever. I did say her name just now, but whatever her name is, Helene, who wrote the script. Mm. And so, um, yeah. So I did learn some things about the production, and I know that. Initially, Kay Parker turned down the role because of the incest plot. And wait, I think this is funny. She says, "She says you're leaving because I don't want to turn the lights on." And he just goes, "Yeah," <laughs> and that's it. The dialogue is so cringe. Okay. It's cringe in not only it's bad, it's poorly written, but it's cringe in other moments. Like after she fucks the sun and she's like, it was like I was cradling you in my arms and you're a baby. Ah! <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I did like the humour in this movie. That was about as much as I liked. Um, Otherwise, well, I found it uh, quite a boring. <laughs> some of it was a little like. Um, it remi- It was a bit carry like, on. If you ever saw those sh- movies, <laughs> like <laughs> her friend, she was like masturbating while she was talking about her son. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, that was weird. That was well. It, uh, and the scene with, um, well, um, oh. Helene and Curdy said that um, that character, the friend, what was her name, Gina? Yeah. She was supposed to have this guy and this girl who were like supposed to be her, I think they called them um, her sex bunnies. Yeah. And they were both supposed to be Asian or, as they said, Oriental. Yes. Uh, which was not very PC. I thought it was at that but, time. Um, anyway, this, I've just read the son looks like he's always got hat hair. Well, excuse me. We're talking about the other. We'll get to Paul and his hat hair in a minute. Um, one thing that I knew about him was that he had a mustache. That he did not want to shave off, um, but he did it under protest and then grew it back. Um, but yeah, they they said that they wanted. Well, I guess for the time in 1980, calling somebody Asian Oriental was okay. But in 2023, mm. in which we are right now, um, we don't say that. Um, no, no. Well, I know uh, I know your nemesis got into trouble for using that word in one of her songs. My nemesis? In the song Born This Way? Oh, I don't even fucking pay attention. <laughs> she's not my nemesis, she's manages. Yeah, but by extension, the enemy of your of your friend is your enemy. <laughs> I just don't pay her any mind. Um now you're I'm like trying to get something across and you're making it so difficult um but I thought yeah but calling them oriental well they said as I was trying to say um they said they wanted the guy and the girl to be oriental the girl is yes. and they were just like in the guy eh, close enough oh my oh. god well, the guy doesn't look anywhere near. Although I, I was a bit <laughs> offended when they played the uh, Chinese music during one of the Yes, <laughs> that's a, that was going to be my next point. That was insanely fucking racist. Oh, my it's God. It's like, I'm surprised they didn't um, do that. You know, um, no, 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 no. I know. <laughs> it was, well, it was, it was pretty damn close yeah. to it. Um, but, um. Yeah, so, um, so Kay Parker turned this down initially because she had, um, had, uh, friends who were incest survivors and she knew the long-term effects of it. And I'm not exactly what, what changed her mind, but I don't think they paid her that much for this because she was still working as a waitress. (laughs) No. She was still working as a waitress when she was doing porn. She worked as a waitress in the... It was a... It was a small... It wasn't a deli. It was like a um, a Jewish um, dairy uh, type um, restaurant. Yeah. That it, but they sold like fish. Uh, mostly meat, but they, they also... A bodega? Fish no, that's Hispanic. Oh, okay. Um, a G- I, don't, I don't know the American terms. <laughs> it was a Jewish place, but it was owned by Steven Spielberg's mother. Okay. So, and there weren't very many kosher restaurants at that time in L.A. So they would have a lot of very famous Jewish uh, executives, yeah. people who worked in, in Hollywood, would come in there all the time. Um and Kay Parker didn't, you know, she didn't want anybody to know that she was doing porn. And 
she said she worked there for about four and a half years um and you know she would take off for a few days here and there to do a movie um but yeah she was waitressing there for the majority of uh her porn career and by the way i don't know if you can hear it but she she is english yes no i could um she doesn't have much of an accent here and she has even less of an accent in the commentary but she's from england she moved she lived in germany for a while and then she came to america i think when she was like 18 or something well you can tell by her teeth that she's british oh that's terrible uh but anyway so she's working at the restaurant owned by i think her name was lee um spielberg Mm -hmm. and she walked in and she said um she uh, caught the eye of the chef who was a young a young guy and he looked at her and he went k parker Uh Mm -hmm. and by the look he gave her she was like oh no Mm. he saw one of my movies Mm. and she said okay just don't please don't say anything to anybody and he gave she said he gave her a look like "Ooh, oops (laughs) so she knew that he had Lee Spielberg knew. Yeah. Uh, so Lee comes in and says, Come here, Kay, and takes her by the hand, and Kay's like, Oh no, oh, I'm in trouble. So she took her to a table and she said, So I want you to tell me all about it. <laughs> <laughs> so she said that she was very, very, very kind and very open minded, and yeah, she didn't have any hang-ups about you it. know prejudices yeah. or hang-ups or no she didn't care um but she said she was very 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 nice to work with yeah very sweet um oh jesus <laughs> um now k is in the second one the sound is so weird yes oh. um <laughs> she's in the third one i think and i believe she's in the fourth one but it's flashback footage yeah, yeah. now is it Curdy and hmm? is it the storyline of incest still throughout all of them yes okay. but it's not but it's not with yeah, it's yeah. not with her oh okay okay it's a different character i, I think it go it follows um, either her sister or her f- friend. Okay. One of them. Um, but yeah, I haven't watched them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, so what, what the fuck was I about to say? You keep throwing me <laughs> off the track here. Um, oh, um, so Aline, Helene and, uh, Curdy who are a couple this was shot in their house yeah by the way and the scene (laughs) the scene when um barbara Kay's character and paul have sex that was in curdy's son's bedroom in his bed yep yep um you use what you have (laughs) Which is the first um, rule of incest. <sighs> mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. This like friend is tanned black. to the point of, like, offensive blackface almost. Like, it's... It, Jesus. Well, they do say that. They do say something to that effect because one of them was from Southern California and so she was tan all the time and one of them was from San Francisco. Yeah. Where you know they don't get a lot of sun, so she was very pale. Yeah, if, if, if she was in the dark room and smiled, you'd see her. Okay. So... Um, She's like a that guy from but... When a Stranger Calls Back. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. So anyway, um, Helene and Curdy worked on 
up to taboo six and then somebody else took over and i think there's 23 oh of my them god <laughs> now <laughs> um well that's nothing new i mean no, there's no, like no, 150 no. dirty debutante fucking movies um I think 23 is a rather low number for a porno franchise. Um, but yeah, at five and six was when they they started shooting on video. Mm -hmm. um, because up until that point, it was 35 millimeter. And uh, Curdy said something that was kind of fucking cringe. Well, they both did, actually. Oh, another thing I wanted to say, too, that Helene said, because Helene wrote the scripts, and she was very anal, so to speak, <laughs> about the dialogue. <laughs> about the dialogue, she wanted, she would not let anybody ad-lib. Yep, yep. She did not want Curdy to change the lines. Everything had to be said as written. What about um, like, the sex noises? I think this was written. Okay. Or either that, either it was written or uh, Curdy told them. Because when oh, she's... She put, she put shoes on, just by the way, because she, she was barefoot before. <laughs> probably a dirty feet, which yes. wasn't uncommon in early yeah. porno movies. Um, but um, when, when Barbara and Paul have their encounter... It was insisted upon by Curdy that she say, I'm coming, I'm coming. And she really didn't want to do it. Mm -mm. She was like, My, the character would not do that. And I'm not comfortable <laughs> saying that. The character. But Jesus. She, yeah, the character. She was like taking this very seriously. Yeah. Um, I would think that she and, might have, if, if she's such a prude and this is where she got her sexual enlightenment with her son, then maybe she would have said it. <sighs> maybe. But anyway, um, one thing that Helene said that I thought was particularly amusing was in the scripts that she wrote, she did not l want for the female characters to swear. Okay, yeah. The fucking female characters all over this movie curse yes. from the beginning to the yes. end. Yes. The fuck is she talking about? She's like, yeah, no, I didn't like it because I thought it cheapened the, the characters and I, I wanted them to have some kind of... Um, Gravitas? <laughs> I guess. Did she mean it was okay swearing for the men. during the, the sex scenes or swearing in general? In general. Mm, yeah, because I think cunt got thrown away, got thrown around quite quickly. Well, I'll let you suck his cock or lick his cock or whatever I I women say all kinds of nasty things cock a swear word on it. like which is <laughs> it's 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 yes it's vulgar but um not... it, well what do you think vulgarity is it's swearing baby cakes no um um what the fuck i keep getting <laughs> thrown off well you're talking track, about man. how she wrote the script and wanted everyone to stick with it. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Um, Curdy, Curdy's favorite scene is the infamous sex scene with between Barbara and Paul. Mm -hmm. And when he was, they were watching it. He was like, "I'm just going to be quiet because I want to watch the scene." And Helene, you talk. She didn't say a fucking word. <laughs> but. He he said it. He said it, it was in a roundabout kind of way that I think he was really stimulated. Yeah, yeah. On set because he said that during the scene he stood behind the cameraman the whole time because I guess he was <laughs> had a he had a pup tent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And. But he didn't say that. But he said, yeah, I stood behind the cameraman the whole time. And when I wanted him to move, I took him by the hips and guided him. Yeah. Because <laughs> he did not want to come out from behind him. I did it hands free. Um, yeah. Um, well, maybe maybe he was trying um, to say that he was looking at it through the lens, I suppose. <laughs> no, he was really, really into it. 
uh, he was really turned on. And Kay said that she was very attracted to Mike Ranger. She said when she first met him, she thought he was very cute. And um, that helped with the scene. Yeah. They were only like, um, I think like six years. Yep. In, in difference. He was like 28 and she was like 34. Oh. Something like that. She's got a... She looks um, a bit... I believe her as being old. Well, people looked older. They did. I, I, that was something that I... I, I read... Uh, I didn't read the article, but I read recently. Because they were commenting how... Um, like, Rue McClanahan and J-Lo were the same age. And, like, comparing photos. And they were saying that mm. as life expectancy gets longer people age slower <laughs> you couldn't be safer in a church um, well. I don't know what the fuck church she's going to but it's definitely not a catholic one is Jerry raping oh god I can't, I can't don't say that word I'm oh my god yes. but it's um it's kind of fucked up that she thinks her friend is being sexually assaulted and she's turned on. Well, it reminded me of um, the movie Disclosure where <laughs> like, where Michael Douglas left a message where he started getting raped. Oh, there I use that word again. Um, uh, fondled by Demi. Oh. Have you not seen that movie? Well, no, I haven't. Ah. I'm, I've, I, know it's, I know of it. Um, and I was saying, uh Oh, because of him, not because of Demi Moore. <laughs> um, but this guy here who played um, the boss, mm. what was his name? Gary, was it? Gary. I keep thinking Gary, uh, I'm probably wrong. V I think it is Gary. Jacket. Um, he's kind of doughy, yeah. isn't he? And he said that he was going to lose weight before they started filming. I think, it's, and I think he's, he's got a healthy not. weight, but like just not. Um, sculpted it or anything. Well, he wanted to lose weight, um, but he didn't. Um, he is was at the time. Oh my god! I know. Um, but he was at in his day a very very prolific uh, stunt dick. Oh, okay. So he worked on a lot of movies yeah. that he was not credited for. Yeah. Um, oh my god <laughs> Oh Jesus Christ I think she was Pretty sure she's wearing a wig Okay Because she's she's was a swimmer Yeah So she used to swim every day So she liked her hair To keep her hair short Yeah Um. But yeah they wanted They wanted her to wear a wig And she was fine with it Yeah yeah Um Um, what was I going to say? Um, the thing about well, Kay Kay Parker was is very um, you know she seems very sweet and soft spoken and she when she was moderated you know mm -hmm. she kept up the chatter throughout the commentary and had some interesting things to say. Um, Helene and Curdy, on the other hand, who just did their commentary with each other, and must have been up there in age because he was in his late fifties at the time this was done, and she was in her early fifties. Oh my God, listen to oh, that yeah, music! Yeah, I know. <sighs> and it's like monkey magic. But they, um, they both told around. I want to say four. Short little anecdotes three times. <laughs> um, and I know one of them was they were filming another movie, and during a break, one of the women came out onto the balcony nude, and the house that they were filming in was right like across the street from a preschool <laughs> well I knew but that story was going <laughs> and they came over and they were like uh could you not 
<laughs> there's kids over mm. here. Uh, um, but also the the house that they filmed, or, or that's supposed to be Barbara's house, that was right next to the Jackson compound. Really? Mm-hmm. So, you know, Michael and Janet and Jerome. Latoya. I don't know. I forget who they were. Ger <laughs> Germaine. Germaine. <laughs> they were all, you know, they could have been in the movie. Yeah. But they were probably a little too young. They got the song Easy as One, Two, Three from this. Mm -hmm. I can't believe this music is slow. I know. On. This is so racially insensitive. <laughs> It's very quaint. Like, it, all of these, like, pre-AIDS epidemic movies are quite naive. <laughs> like, I, I feel a bit I feel way, bad are, with how the world went. <laughs> are there condoms? No. Oh, God. Well, that's no good. But, um, you know, I don't think they, it, nobody I came no into... Well, still, that, I mean... Oh, are you talking about STDs he, or babies? <laughs> well, both. But you can, you can get an STD. Yeah. Even if uh, you don't, like a, someone doesn't ejaculate yeah, into you. And you can... Syphilis or... You can also get... You, you, a woman can get pregnant by pre-ejaculate. Yes, yeah. People, a lot of people say that's not true, but it is true. Possible. There's still some swimmers in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and some men produce more than others. Yeah. So, um, but it was interesting too because, like I said, they were, Curdy and Helene were a bit up there in age, and I don't think they remembered a whole lot of stuff. But they said that um, Mike Ranger left the porn industry directly after this. Uh, no, he did not. <laughs> he did several movies, actually, and was in the industry until 1989. Yeah. But if you look at his fucking IMDb credits, he's like in like three dozen fucking more movies. It's like, what are you talking about? Maybe that's what he told them. <laughs> Oh, mm. when they asked him to be in the sequels, oh no, I've left the industry. Um, well, no, his character ran away. I don't know if that was planned. I don't know. But another thing that I thought was funny, um, in the Helene and, well, in Kay's, okay, in Helene and Curdy's um, commentary, Helene says that she. The the red dress that Barbara wears out on the date, that was Helene's. Yeah, yeah. She had to loan it to her because I guess she didn't. They and Kay said that they all wore their own clothes, and she hated the dress. She's like everything else was fine. We all had to we all had to wear our own clothes, but I was. She said. I I had to borrow the dress from. She didn't even remember that it was Helene. Yeah, but she was like, I hated that dress. Just how it felt a little. Um, she just didn't like yeah, it. Yeah. I guess she thought it was ugly. I don't know. <laughs> um, it's a very and, um, picnic dress. I don't know. And again, a was... continuity thing is that she puts on stockings, Eric, and then later she doesn't even have stockings on. Um, I don't think anybody was thinking about continuity. <laughs> I I don't know if it was. Is there, is there more than one shower scene? Oh, or, I think that's the only <laughs> yeah, one. They just stop asking me because I sort of just <laughs> watch the movie without taking much notice of it. Oh, good. I'm so glad. I'm glad <laughs> you did your homework. Um. I watched well, it, but didn't absorb I... it, let's say. Mm-hmm. 
that was low hanging fruit, by the way, and I will not rise to the bait. Um, I think that it was this this shower scene that just passed. Um, because then, and I'm pretty sure it was the only shower scene in the movie. But first, they didn't say specifically why, but it was shot with a mirror. Okay. So what you see on the screen is is the reflection yeah. in the mirror. I I have no idea why they did that. Yeah. And that that goes into when she's in the room when she's putting the dress on too. Yeah. So I thought that was weird. Yeah. Maybe they were going to do an earthquake was, at one stage. It was an artistic choice. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um. Now I felt a bit. Uh, um. Anyway, I'll, I'll get to it. Uh, the fact that she's wearing such sexy underwear, but then is quite prudish, I found interesting. <laughs> like she's, as in, she's not even wearing underwear. She just got her garter belt and stockings on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, I sort of dress this way when I'm expecting to get some. Yes, of course you do. Well, maybe she thought she was going to get some with fucking, what was that guy's name, Jerry? No, it's the other guy that she's going with tonight. The one who wouldn't hurt a fly type of thing. Well, Gary was the boss. No, but she's going out with her friend's what? recommendation. The one who... Yeah, wasn't know... his name Jerry? Uh, no, but the guy that she's going out with tonight, I forget. They're about to say. They're the one that the blonde, you know, the rapist... You know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, God. I'm not going to be able to stop saying that word. Yeah. The blonde, I, you I know, the, 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 the pro... Um, uh, sexual assault. Yes, woman. The guy that she set him up with, set her up with. There is so much going on here that... With no sound yes. whatsoever. Yeah, they could have at goes, least made him fucking jerk forever. off. They could have had a wank scene. I wanted to see, see how she thing... zipped herself up, but now they left the room. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Um, apparently, um, up until around uh, I think when they started shooting on video there was kind of a uh, a protocol for porn movies mm -hmm. um, that got started I guess in the 70s and then bled over into the 80s and that was seven sex scenes per movie one had to be an orgy, and one had to be girl girl. Okay. Um, but that that stopped uh, as the years went on. Uh, a lot of them just do like four. Yeah. But how long are the movies? Three or four. Well, the movies tend to be like two hours oh. or two and a half. Okay. But the sex scenes themselves are like twenty twenty five minutes. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, and the sex scenes in the in these early movies aren't that long. Yeah. Uh, especially by comparison. They couldn't be that long because there's seven, and this is only an hour and 26 yeah. minutes. So... They're long enough. <laughs> <laughs> they feel like uh, they go on forever. <laughs> They're like musical interludes. I think that you have a prejudice against the heterosexuals. I mean, I suppose, you know, had it been gay sex, I might have reacted differently. But I won't know. Cause... But you were just saying off mic that you like the movie Nine Sewers. And yeah, you like but... Short Bus, no, I which didn't just say got I liked a Blu ray songs. fucking release. What? I didn't say I liked Nine Songs. Nine Songs. No. Did I say Nine Stories? That was a J.D. Salinger book. Oh, really? You don't like Nine Songs? 
No, it was epic. It was shit. <laughs> I said there was one <laughs> there was one good blow scene, but no, like it's it's a terrible film. Oh. Um <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no, I'm a pussy licker. Oh. I mean, I guess I was glad that they were intercutting with this sex scene, at least. Oh, my God. <laughs> and what is... I just don't understand what is with this Brazilian music. Maybe they did a song for each continent. No, a lot of it is Brazilian. <laughs> Except for that was very racially insensitive yeah. Asian theme. And some of the music has vocals, which I think is crazy. There is a theme for Taboo 2. Um, and I used to listen to... Do you remember Loveline? They used to come on MTV. No, well, we didn't really have MTV. <laughs> oh. Well, love, well, you know Dr. Drew, right? Yes. Dr. Drew Pinsky? Yes. Well... Loveline started out as a call-in radio show that was nationally syndicated. Yeah. And it was an advice show, um, generally having to do with sex in some way. Yeah, yeah. Um, Dr. Phil, which is what we th had. And then they brought it over to MTV and they did it in a studio where either people asked questions from the audience or if they were too embarrassed they asked their question from behind a glass wall yeah um but yeah so but it started on the radio and they kept doing it on the radio even when they did it on mtv and um on the website I used to listen to it a lot because they used to have really good guests, celebrity guests. I remember Tracy Lords was on there, John Waters was on there a few okay. times. Um, but Adam Carolla was the co host for a while. And what he had a him? weird thing for <laughs> he had a weird thing for Taboo too. Yeah. And he loved the theme song. So much so that he had the audio engineer at Loveline rip it and he would ask him to play it and they would play it from time to time and he would sing along to it <laughs> it was kind of oddball well that's all right <laughs> on on our local radio station whenever they have a discussion where like something involves your bottom they'll always play the song i said what what in the butt <laughs> and it and i <laughs> And one time they said, you should look up that song and see what it's like. And I looked it up and it's quite <laughs> rude and weird. <laughs> I don't know that song. I think it was used in South Park one time, although it doesn't really matter. I'll send it to you later in an email. Mm-hmm. What, is a form of um, retaliation? Yes. <laughs> no, it's it's uh no, the lyrics are rude. You know, the the film clip is quite strange. It's 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 almost like nineties uh internet website that create you create yourself with like a flying toaster type thing. Flying toaster. Huh? I said flying toaster. Yes. I like flying toasters. Oh god. <laughs> really parting her beef curtains there. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I made myself a charcuterie the other day. It was quite nice. Oh, did you? Yeah. Just something to nibble on for a few days. Mm-hmm. And some salami mm -hmm. and cabana and pickled onions. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it's like that episode of The Simpsons when they had that, um... 
where they had that um, fucking what was that that film strip of, with the rabbit. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then it, it was like, and then comes the wedding night, and then you hear the porno music, yes. and the kids go, "Ew!" <laughs> and Mrs. Krabappel was at the back with with a cigarette. She's faking it. That I, I actually put that picture up of Mrs. Krabappel the other day, with the uh, caption being, "Every time I see RuPaul get choked up, <laughs> that's the, that's the image that comes to mind." I don't get it. Whenever she talks to her queens on Drag Race, she's like, she starts going, shy. I'm really proud of you all. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's like, this feels really put on. <laughs> and that makes you think of Mrs. Krabappel smoking a cigarette? Saying in the back she's of the faking it, yeah. Oh. Okay, I gotcha. I did not, I, I, well, I, I do like Rue, but I, I was never a fan of that show. But I would see clips of it from time to time because they would usually talk about it on fucking um, the drag show or her soup talk show. The drag oh, okay, show. Okay. Um, but they would show clips from it from time to time on the soup. Yeah. And I remember there was one clip that they showed where Rue was clearly trying to have. Like the Ty- remember when Tyra had that meltdown on Top Model? Oh and it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was screaming at the girl. And it was so comical. Um, but yeah, yeah, Rue was like trying to have one of those moments, and it was very fake. Yeah. Um. Did you ever? But, <laughs> um. Did I ever what? No, there was a show that I used to quite like for a few years, but then I stopped watching it because I just. And I could only take so much. It's uh, called Gogglebox, and I don't know if the Americans ever got a version of it, but it was... I don't know what the hell that is. <laughs> it was actually better than I was expecting it to be. I thought I'd give it a go, and I really enjoyed it. It's really... It's just... Uh, it was like five families, and uh, they'd be all given a, a TV show to watch, and it was just their reactions to it. So it's like a reaction video, but... Oh, yeah. But one of them, they watched... Uh, they got them all to watch an episode of RuPaul's and <laughs> one of the um, like there was a professional family with two daughters and they really enjoyed it, it was quite good they all enjoyed it but yeah, it was just mm. now have you ever been to an orgy before? no I'm not I've never even had a three way I'm very very vanilla you know this maybe were you conceived at an orgy? probably <laughs> It's a swing party. I don't see any fish bowls. <laughs> That's actually a funny uh, view that she's... You don't even see her face. <laughs> Although, I think that for the fact mm. that she's got a picture of a naked woman in her own house, she's quite prudish. Well, she said she was that way in real life. To a degree, because of her upbringing, she was Lutheran, taught not to like her body or to have any sort of sexuality, and which I wonder the like one she will predispose us to getting used. The one thing that she didn't like doing um, was the masturbation. Yeah. Um. I guess I brought back memories of being told that it was bad and wrong or whatever. <clears throat> you should be told it's good. She's, she's like a, um, a spiritual healer these days. Okay. And a, ch- and a channeler. Um, so, um, yeah, she's into all of that, um, you know, crystals and Reiki and chakras. It's very chakras, um, human yes. centipede, but no, what's that snake that eats itself? I don't know. Human centipede. Jesus Christ! The orgy. Th- this is a daisy chain. Yes, that's the term. Oh my god. <laughs> 
<laughs> that one woman needs to shut the <laughs> fuck up. It's like there's a... <laughs> uh, sometimes when you watch, when I watch an old sitcom, you'll hear a really distinct laugh. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know exactly what you mean. Oh my god. <laughs> One thing that they used to do, they don't do it anymore, thank god, on Judge Judy, whenever they would show a clip of something that was going to happen after the commercial, and usually it would be her giving somebody a sassy yeah, remark, yeah. and it would cut to... Uh, the response of whoever she was talking to and you would hear like canned a canned response from the um the gallery yeah. and you would always hear this woman go oh <laughs> but it was ne it was never there yeah yeah they would always just do it for the coming up yeah this is her courtroom i love me some judge judy what it's her courtroom yes mm hmm <sighs> well, well at least we got finally got some variation with the fucking music now yeah something something more now this is like kind of like, like country. fucking country yeah. yeah just this porno country yeah porno country <laughs> Oh, it looks so. gay though, actually. <sighs> it looks like a moustache. Well, <laughs> sorry, I'm just looking at these uh, fairy vagines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that that was one thing too that she said. Um, turned her off from being in porn was just like out of nowhere um, uh, pubic hair just disappeared oh okay yeah, maybe and she started she getting cut like, okay, away this yeah. is not for me I wonder who didn't like it whether it was I don't know this goes on for like 20 minutes I just want to look no yeah. just let me look a little bit no no Oh, come on. No. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> Again, this should be the first yeah, what are you so one. Someone says for, no. Tony, just what? Let go. <laughs> Why doesn't she just punch him in the fucking face? Mm. No, please. <laughs> Locked up tighter than Fort Knox. <laughs> Finally. Yeah. It only took her saying no about 17,000 yeah. times. Just like And a, stop that. He had to be denied three times <laughs> before his cock crowed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because, you know, Sorry. when a lady says no, she means pick me up and put me on the hood of a car. <laughs> Fuck me like a dash or What was I referencing? <laughs> uh, you don't even know what I was no, referencing. No, I don't actually, no. <laughs> Too Wong Fu. Oh. I have seen that a couple of times, but not enough to be familiar with the lingo. Well, when Chris Penn pulls pulls them over, and he gets Patrick Swayze out of the car, and he starts getting handsy, and he says, "When a lady says no, she means," and then she gets pulled, he picks him up and puts him on on the hood of the car, <laughs> and then he puts his hand up the dress, and then his face drops because he's oh, mm. get your hand off my dick, buddy. It's his crocodile Dundee moment. Mm. Mm-hmm. 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 
Isn't this bow chicka bow wow? Yeah, no. It's gone from country This is like to... so it's like so cliched porno. Yes. <laughs> and there's there's some more of this too. It goes from like, you know, the racist Asian music to country music to Brazilian music. And then we get the funky guitar mm. riffs. It should have had an opera for the mother and son scene. Mm, no. Yeah, I can mm. imagine an aria going on at the time. No, no. Mm-mm. Is that in choral? <laughs> Mm-mm, no. <laughs> there wasn't much... This is so cartoony. Unless, unless I'm not that familiar with the biology. There wasn't much anal going on. It's purely pussy stuff. I can't believe you just said purely pussy. Oh. <laughs> Which is don't fine. Say pussy. <laughs> Maybe it was still illegal back then. Don't say pussy. But um no, that became part of the formula later. Okay, to have one backdoor thing. To have anal Yeah. Well I don't know if it was one. To have at least, yeah. At le- well at least, yeah. I wonder you know, um when female squirts became in vogue. Oh, God. I don't want to know. <laughs> There's the garter belt. Oh, God. I, 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 I was in my teenage years. Like, it was like one of those, um, friend founded VHS from his parents' closet type situations. Mm-hmm. And um, showed me a video of um, a sex scene where it was vaginal, um, but it was from behind, yeah. and the camera was like underneath, and she started squirting, and so much came out that it kind of freaked out the guy who because he stopped fucking her and backed up out of his scene <laughs> and even she seemed shocked yeah. by how much came out it was a lot um and i guess after that she was i don't know i don't know what happens mm. if it, if it's sore or something i don't know because after that well, you, think, you, you know, know, you know that it assists with the, uh, it's the lubricating. I don't know, but it, I I don't know, but it, it, he wasn't afraid to come back, yeah. and finish. But you know, this time it was anal. This, this reminds me of the laugh so that's gaff, why, if that's what it was called, <laughs> where they had those little doors in the in the wall. The laugh what? The laugh gaff, or whatever. I forget what it's called. But... I don't know. This is going on way too fucking long. <laughs> and it's the same riff. Switch it up. Mm. We need the remix. Yeah. It should have been on Finally Enough Love. Oh my god. <laughs> the seven inch extended. Who's version. that girl? Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm ready to go. Let's go. <laughs> you really blew it. I can't believe we haven't gotten to the mother son sex scene yet. It sort of came out of nowhere, in my humble opinion. No, not really, because he was spying on her. No, song. no, when it came, when it's, when, she, when she, you know, had sex with him. You I realised the there was that tension, happens. but like, you know, the fact that it actually happened. Sexual, sexual tension, yes. Mm-hmm. I think the throw might have worked better where it just something that they fantasised about. Oh. Hmm. 
This is something that I don't feel guilty at all for kink shaming. Yeah, I'm I'm going to I'm going to draw a line in the sand here mm -hmm. and say I do not approve of incest, okay? You're such and a liberal. If you're into Brandon. that shit. <laughs> and if you're into that shit, then you're I don't want to talk to you cuz you're a freak. Yeah, yeah. This isn't a V.C. Andrews novel. <laughs> We're not royalty. Mm -mm. These aren't, you know, Roman times when everybody was fucking everybody and syphilis was spreading like the plague. <sighs> I have fantasies about the Greek... Roman Greek times with all the sexual and all the guys look like yeah because everybody was just fucking everybody was just fucking everybody and they all looked like fucking gladiators and it was there was no sexual orientation you know well I guess there was no Catholic guilt <laughs> no there wasn't that no because no well you find that with a lot of um um Commonwealth countries, they'll talk about how sexually liberated they were before the British came. Mm. I mean, going back to, uh, to Drag Race, I've been watching uh, the Canadian version and there's an Indian that's on there. And he was saying that his grandparents realised that he was gay before his parents did. And they started... Um, Introducing him to Hindu gods that were transgender and homosexual. Oh. Um. Which I thought was very nice. <laughs> yeah. Um. I. I. Oh. <laughs> I'm just thinking. Imagine if this recording didn't work out. We had to do it again. <laughs> I would just like slip my wrists. <laughs> Let me knock on wood. <laughs> now I'm afraid to touch my laptop. <laughs> Actually, I was... I don't know why, but I was asked the other day, just by a friend, just out of curiosity, if I would ever have sex with, like, a clone <laughs> of myself. I was, yeah, sure. Big good practice. They, they, there was a, um, a parody of The View, um, like, in 98, and on SNL, when Sarah Michelle Gellar hosted, and she, this was, like, the original lineup on The View when Meredith Vieira and um, Debbie Manopoulos and um, Star Jones yeah, um, yeah. and um, Sarah Michelle Gellar played Debbie Manopoulos who was like she, I think she was the youngest one and they like played her as like ditzy and in the 90s cloning was like a big thing you know with the sheep and everything yeah, yeah. So they were, the cloning um, got brought up, and Sarah just goes, If I had a clone, I'd make out with myself. And everybody looked at her, and she just goes, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and Sherry O'Terry, as Barbara Walters, goes, Do not speak again! <laughs> was, was she calling herself Bubba Wobbles? <laughs> <laughs> Why is this still going on? <laughs> it's the the antithesis of the movie. Oh, is this is this the mother? Is this the yeah, the mother son? Mother son? Yeah. Oh, I th I didn't I didn't even realize. Yeah, because yeah, it does that. come out you of know, nowhere. She was remembering the orgy, and then she went past the son's room. It's like, oh, you're naked. Let's. So that's so great. 
That's where you came out of, son. <sighs> mm-hmm. He reminds... He looks like a... What is it? The greatest American hero? You know, the guy. <laughs> it's just me. Yeah, I know. I don't think he went on to do too much. I don't think so, no. So, and that... That show didn't last long. And it was... The song lasted long, long when I was thanks really... to George Costanza's answering machine. <laughs> well, um... I swear to God, when I used to go to this gay club, they had karaoke, and every fucking time I would go, somebody would do that song. <laughs> really? Yeah. Is that I'm Walking On Air? Is that the name of the song? No, maybe I don't. I think it's called Believe, Believe It or, or Not. not. Oh, okay. But yeah, somebody would always do that fucking song. Oh my god. I did um, Mouth at Merle Bainbridge. Oh my god. <laughs> Karaoke? Were you drunk or And so? nobody. Oh, I was drunk. Please. Oh, you needed to do a You drunk think I would get up and drunk. sing if I was sober? Oh god, ew. Um, but you think I would have the balls to get up and sing if I was sober? I've only ever um, sung sober. Because I force no, myself I to do things that I don't want to do. No, That's but why I'm here I, today. First of all, <laughs> Sorry. First of all um, nobody in the whole bar knew the fucking song. Yeah. Because usually people will sing along with you to help you out, but nobody knew the song. And I forgot that there's... I forgot the bridge where it gets really quiet. Oh, my God. And um, it's almost a cappella. Yeah. And as soon as it came up, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I have to do this. <laughs> I'm up here fucking singing a cappella. Um, yeah, it was really bad. Uh, and another time I got up to do, because they didn't have, a, they didn't really didn't have a very good selection. Um, but I got up, I, their Britney Spears catalog was very limited and i was like oh i'll do a baby one more time and i didn't it wasn't listed because they had a book of shit that they would the songs that they would pass around it didn't say that it was a remix <laughs> so i didn't even fucking know until i got up there and the music started that it was a fucking remix i was like oh shit where the fuck i don't know i, don't know I did a, I am. going back to x i did a landslide and I always remember uh, I read out the word instrumental. Because <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> like I was reading it. <laughs> that's like reading the fucking um, the action one, in a yeah. script. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. John Waters said that um, fucking um, Edith Massey used to read this the stage direction. Oh, how cute! All the time. <laughs> well, I think she was like a mental defect. Or there was she seemed there was uh, clearly like a child of lead poisoning or something. Yeah. And like a little, like a little kid, like trying to memorize vocabulary words. Yeah. She used to write out her lines on a notepad over and over and over. She was like a Reese with a spoon. Because she couldn't remember. Freeway. She's what? Like Reese with a spoon in Freeway. Well, she didn't write anything on the. The cat drinks milk. (laughs) Well, it it, well with her accent, it was dranks. Yes. Dranks. There was an A in there. <laughs> Love your mother. That's <laughs> like something. I think we should see other people. <laughs> oh God. No, that's like, huh? 
that's like that's not something that's not something you can come back from i'm sorry (laughs) um that's like you know pack your bags and never see each other ever again yeah yeah type of thing that's why, like, at the end of a Serbian film, after the father rapes his son, he has to kill them all. <laughs> because, yeah, no, you can't come back from that. Yes. Unless you want to live the rest of your life having an incestuous relationship with your son or mother or whatever. You do you. Um, but if it was a mistake... Oh, God. <sighs> and now this little montage scene goes on fucking forever. Well, at least it There's wasn't so a sexual montage. <laughs> you know, <it's... laughs> oh. But yes, there is a lot of padding. Well, do you know how long... I don't know how long... Um, Eight inches. When this was written... But do you know how long porno scripts are, uh, generally? I'd say 16 pages. Close, 14. Oh. What are the sex scenes written like? I don't know. I've never seen an actual porno script. Yeah. But I would assume that... Um, like would there's some kind of like, um, you know how they have like INT for interior or whatever yeah, in yeah, scripts. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would, I would say maybe there's like some kind of code or terminology that's written in the script when it calls for the sex scene. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Well, I, I read the, uh, script for basic instinct and it's sort of just, uh, you know, describe the first scene as, you know, uh, she's on top, then later she's this, later they're this, later they're this. So whether the script would sort of suggest the uh, the root of the sexual activity, let's say like a, it starts off with a blowjob followed by a missionary, followed by anal, followed by... Yeah, no, they don't do that. Yeah. They no, they, no, they're not mapped out. Yeah, yeah, like that. It's usually just you know spontaneous, but I think that they they do have to have a um, they do have to have the oral in the beginning. Yeah, if it's a, if it's a um, ah, oh, this was San Francisco a straight scene. Okay, yeah. If it's a straight scene, you know, it's both. Well, and if it's a gay scene, yeah. it's both. But, um, and um, they usually do missionary. And then you then it turns to the girl on top. Um, and then it, you, doggy, which I don't like that terminology, Reverse but cowboy. from behind... Okay. No, reverse cowgirl and doggy are totally Yeah, no, things. I know, I know. Oh, no, I was just giving another another word. Well, I said the girl on top, but the from behind is usually the last from what I remember when I used to watch straight porn on the regular mm-hmm. because gay porn was not available to me. But I and I knew that it was it was always last because um, I was always waiting for it because that was when you actually saw the guy. <laughs> um, and the girl was just bent over and you just saw the guy all sweaty and thrusting. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that was what I was waiting for. Although, oh, this song was atrocious. Yes. What? I don't think you saw the Golden Gate Bridge. I should have been paying better attention. No, she had a lot. Maybe they... Maybe they needed... um, Rights to it. A permit. 
I don't. Are the rights? <laughs> they needed the rights to use the bridge. Well, like you can't uh, use that picture of the Beverly Hills sign. You can't. Like it, it, I think it's protected or so. I don't know. It's you know that little arched symbol. Yeah. Oh no! You need to pay for it's it. Like it's like a uh, shield. Yeah. Yes. She said that she really didn't, not because, you know, she had an issue, but she didn't really associate with anybody in the industry when she wasn't filming. She really didn't have any friends. Yeah. Um, but the... The woman who played her friend, the fucking crazy yeah. nympho, I can't remember what her name is, but she's, but Kay said when they were filming, um, she wasn't, you know, cold or, or mean or anything, but it was like, um, she was guarded, kind of. The, the friend, the swimmer. And the friend. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then after they, 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 uh, wrapped, they met up again and they started talking and they found out that they had a lot in common and then, then they became friends, oh, that's nice. but they really didn't talk to each other when they were making the movie. The guy who did was a cinematography, who did the cinematography for this went on to do some pretty big movies. Okay. Um, what I was going to ask is, were a lot of the actors, was this, would they consider this more a film as opposed to a porno movie? I think so. Yeah. Do you reckon that that might have been why the friend was a bit, uh, not standoffish, but like, uh, treating it differently? Where she was trying to, like, give a performance as opposed to just a sex thing? It's possible. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know... I don't know what her motivation was. Um, <laughs> but, um, but Kay seemed to be, you know, very, like I said, she, she seemed to be very down to earth yeah. and friendly. Um, she said she never saw Mike Ranger again after this movie. But they were in another movie. But they didn't have a scene together. Have any? They didn't have any scenes together. Yeah. Well, I th I don't know if they didn't have scenes together, but they didn't have a sex scene together um, before this called Dracula sucks. And so I guess she knew him from that. Was that the movie that was in video violence? No, that was the Vampire Takes a Bride. <laughs> A movie I hope to never see again. <laughs> mm. I'm watching this so biologically <laughs> as opposed to <laughs> sexually. <laughs> You know what kind of freaked me out once? Um, I, I used to be friends with somebody who... Uh, he was in a long-term um, relationship with his boyfriend, and then they broke up. And so he had to move in with his sister, who was a lesbian. And she had a roommate who was a straight guy who was divorced and he had two sons. Um, and, um, so he was there for a while and one night they got to drinking and the guy said 
that he had always wanted to experiment. And I don't think they went past oral. Yeah. Um, but he said it was kind of awkward. Um, Wh- and why? then, well, because I don't think he really knew what he was doing. The straight guy. Okay. I, um, I found that not to be the case. <laughs> I don't. I. I don't. This was so long ago. Yeah, yeah. I just. I, I just remember it not being a very good experience. Yeah. Um. But he found out later that the guy had a thing with his sister too. Oh, okay. And as soon as he told me, I was like, "Ugh." Um, the Eskimo but, kissed your sister. <laughs> but all he did was go down on her because. She, you know, she didn't want to do anything yeah, yeah, yeah. further than that. So I guess she was just like, you know, munch my puss. Yeah. Um, but I was like, okay. I don't know how I pitch. Right. Well, that's that's not as bad. I just... Uh, I don't know. I feel I like just a think woman would lick out too... another woman differently than a man would. I don't know why. No, you're not letting me finish my thought here, okay. man. Finish off. But I, I just thought it would be weird if... A brother and sister sucked on the same dick. You know, even if it wasn't at the same time. (laughs) But if they were with the same guy, that's weird. That's almost, that's like, it's not quite incest, but it's close. Yeah. Kind of. I, I, you know, every dick has a past, so you can't really get hung up on those things. (laughs) Mm. I've had, I've had an experience with twins. Uh, at separate occasions, because I... <laughs> okay, I was about to say. Because <laughs> I remember, like, uh, chatting to the guy and saying, but we've met before, like, I, <laughs> I gave you a lift. And he said, oh, it was, uh, you know, did they live yada yada? And I said, yeah, oh, that's my twin brother. <laughs> oh. Did you notice anything different about them? Like in their um, no, it was mainly just it was just a head experience. It was just it was just you know. Oh God! A shot of protein. <clears throat> yeah, in a parking lot, probably. I know your past, <laughs> you fucking whore. Oh. Why does this movie feel like four hours long? I know. <laughs> Probably because your sex is like two minutes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sorry. I was just being an arsehole. <laughs> mm. I was hitting too close to my own home. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 I've got some Ikea lamps. Well, I was trying to ask you if, like... The twins were, you know... No, they had similar... Were there they had any... similar dicks. <laughs> like, if that's... <laughs> okay. I think... Go you know, ahead. Their personalities were a bit different, if, they, if anything. Well, you know... <laughs> <laughs> well, were they the same size and everything? Yeah, it's, you know, it's similar. Uh, one was um, a lot more outgoing, and the other one was a bit more shyer. More shyer? Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess it's hard to determine um, the physicality of a member I'm being, yeah, if it's got a yeah. turtleneck on it. What? Um, and that, you know, there was some time difference between the two, like maybe. <laughs> A few weeks to months, you know, it wasn't fresh in my mind. There's a um, <laughs> there's a podcast. What? No, I think she's funny, <laughs> stupid but funny. There's a podcast um, done by these twin brothers, and they're both gay, and they're both 
very very flamboyant yeah and um they uh they do a podcast for the goosebumps book i don't know if they still do the, do it but i was listening to it for a while and then it got on my nerves <laughs> but they would go they would t- they would talk about every goosebumps book cuz they grew up on them and had mm. kind of an obsession and they would re they would reread each one and then talk about it oh god <laughs> they would talk about it every week um Mm. Oh, were you letting it come? <laughs> or was that the end of your story? Mm. Here's the Brit I hear. I don't believe this. Well, yeah, I mean, like a natural accent usually comes out when you're more emotional. Yeah. Oh, no, but was that the end of your story about the twins? Yes. Oh, okay, sorry. All right. Well, I, I, I was, you just, it just made me think, you know, having gay twins is not pretty uncommon. common. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, my ex had a friend who was, uh, uh mm-hmm. He was a little kooky, and plus he was very, very um, sexually experimental, Mm -hmm. and he had a twin who I don't remember if he was gay or not, but um, when they were younger, um, he, I think the they had a babysitter who was like kind of twisted yeah and she convinced them to blow each other oh okay oh yeah and they they were like 10 yeah, or something that's terrible yeah on a happier note the move is about to end <laughs> <laughs> yes thankfully <laughs> well don't we have one more sex scene we've got a sex scene through the credits yeah, and there again, what's the matter? You haven't eaten anything. You know, I, I was thinking that uh, there's a huge difference between saying, I'm not very hungry, to I've lost my appetite. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> one sounds really like a passive aggressive. I can't stand to be around you anymore. I bet you when she wrote that fucking line, she was like, oh my god, I am so clever. I am the porno Hemingway. That is so suggestive and clever. Yeah, she dropped the fucking mic. She she George Costanza and just left the office. (laughs) Exactly. All this eating is making me hungry. Shut the fuck up. (laughs) Don't ever write another porno movie again. Oh, I I thought the line was cute. That was stupid. You know, I, for a like long I time, said, I didn't I, know what the term to carry through someone through the threshold was. I thought it was a sexual term. <laughs> and I was told, no, it's just when you carry them to the door. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, like, God. I thought it was like a euphemism for, you know, piercing the hymen well that's because your mind is constantly in the fucking no, gutter because it was a wedding thing you know i was listen when i was l- listening to our strange land commentary while i was mixing it um we were talking about snowboarding and immediately you were like oh i heard it's when you snort coke off someone's dick well, i looked I like, it up because well, she put it down like as a thing to sort of say she didn't mean it like in a sexual connotation it was supposed to I thought it was a hint, be hint something to, to bond it. with him over <laughs> that's why she asked him what kind of board he used yeah <laughs> oh it's got some very close veins though <laughs> oh 
I didn't really get to see a stunt cock. I didn't say that there was a stunt cock no, he here. He was, I said he, that he, he was a stunt cock he, person. Yeah. Yeah, but in other movies, yeah, not no, this I one. To, I was I'm, trying to see his cock. Yeah. Oh. I feel like I put a H. Well, it must be pretty it, nice, but. Word. An H? When I say cock, I feel like I've got a breath in this every time I say it. Yes, like you do. Like cool whip. You say, well, you, oh, yes, you, you do sound like you're saying C-O-C-H. Okay. But I don't think you should say it. It's 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 a little too vulgar for me. and It's inappropriate and it makes me feel bad inside. Oh my God. His, his flesh scepter. Flesh scepter. <laughs> okay. So she got over a light on thing. Well, I guess now she was with someone she actually liked being with. Yeah, but she was with that. Was that was the father of the child, <laughs> wasn't it? Yeah. Well, I don't think she liked. I don't think she liked having sex with him. But they were together for, you know, the length of time that her son's been At alive. least 20 years. Yeah. But, yeah, I I don't know. But I don't think that she liked... I don't think that she liked having sex with him because he had to have things his way. Yeah. And he really didn't care what she wanted, so... He wouldn't go down on her. Is that what you're saying? No. Well, I mean... <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm really not trying to analyze taboo. Um, this is not a movie point? with. <laughs> well, this is not a movie with layers, or depth. Well, the only layers I've seen is in their <laughs> meat flaps. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're done. I can't believe I bought four of these. <laughs> I bought Taboo 1 through 4. Have you seen any of the more recent ones? No. No. No, but I heard supposedly Taboo 4 is probably the best one because it's more story driven story driven and it has the least amount of sex yeah but it's got ginger lynn in it Ugh. oh is that the I one who doesn't like uh, her. what's her face tracy yeah. lords and um and she doesn't like linnea quigley um vinegar syndrome also put out um uh vice academy one through three mm-hmm and they were in well Linnea was in well Linnea was in one and two and Ginger was in one through three. Um Linnea didn't do any more because her her agent thought that because it was they were more like, you know, sex comedies and I think that she was more associated with horror. So I guess her agent thought that she would stick it would be better for her to stick to horror. Yeah. Um, but anyway, during the first, I know during the first one anyway, I, I could only assume the second one as well, uh, they did not like each other at all, and they didn't get along, and I could assume, I would, I could only assume that it, it's Ginger, because nobody ever says anything bad about Linnea. Um, but they, Vinegar Syndrome put out, uh, a set for one through three, and there are two um, they're extended interviews. I haven't seen them because it, it was a limited run and they're sold out. Um, but there's an interview with Ginger in which, because she's always happy to talk shit about everybody. Yeah, yeah. That's um, become her persona. But I was, I was, that, yeah, she just hates everybody. Yeah. Um, but uh um i was i was watching a review for the disc for the set on youtube earlier and the guy um said that he was surprised about how candid 
she was. And I was like, okay, well, you probably have <laughs> never seen Ginger Lynn being interviewed before because that's Ginger Lynn. Is she related to Paul Lynn? Uh, yes, yes, she is. He was the center square and she was the center hole? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's Lynn, not <laughs> Lind. <laughs> Must you ruin all my jokes? <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> you and your grandpa jokes, I swear to God. Ruin everything. Yes. We've just watched Taboo. <laughs> what do you want to <laughs> accept? <laughs> um, also, I think, I, can, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure... Ron Jeremy is in Taboo 4. Yeah, I think that I looked that up and we were talking about it a little while ago. Oh, God. Yeah, that's... What good. ended up happening with him? I have no idea. Yeah. No, because he had, like, those allegations that were akin to yes. that blonde woman in the movie. What movie? No, we just watched the blonde... Uh, Taboo. <laughs> Oh, you mean he the word was I can't her say therapist? Anymore. Yes, he therapized her. Um, yes, in the bathroom. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what came of it, but I think he got canceled. Well, I mean, well, it's about fucking time. He's only he's eighty-seven getting... years old, yeah. and he was still doing porn. Oh my god! Ugh, he's so gross. Bloody Viagra. And he was a novelty. I mean, like he. <sighs> It, wa it wasn't like he was in porn because anybody thought he was attractive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, he it was he was well it it was he was a novelty because he was gross. It was a bit Jabba the but Hutt. But also because he had a big dick. Yeah. What? It was a little bit Jabba the Hutt. Hmm. All right. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Okay. So, do you have any final thoughts on taboo? Uh. No, Those but I will have to wipe myself off on the for... curtains. On the curtains? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. All right. And your final thought? I have I have absolutely nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um but yeah, supposedly the stories get a little bad. So maybe what was the actual two. story here? She was looking for a job, and then she had sex with their son. <laughs> That's all there was really to it. There really weren't any stakes. No, no, not even at dinner. No, she she her husband left her. She went to look for a job. She almost got therapized by her boss, and then she, she went got on with a date, the went to a sex club at the end. And then she got with a well, she well not before having sex with her son, yeah. and then she got with a therapist, and it was like you know, I'm over it. Having sex with my son didn't happen. Let's just move on. Turn the page. Yeah. The end. Roll credits. <laughs> yeah, there really wasn't much of a story here. And they all lived. There was no character ever after. arc or development. What? They all lived happily ever after. And whatever happened mm -hmm, to the being... the son's girlfriend? Does she come back in the sequel? I think. I think so. Mm -hmm. Well, um, it does. Look here. They they are <laughs> at least the first three are a continuation yeah. of the story. Um. I think part four is loosely. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but perhaps we'll do an, a double feature with Taboo 2 and 3. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I we'll, could just we'll cross feel that the... bridge when we get to it. <laughs> I, could, I could almost feel your nausea from across the world. <laughs> well, I was just thinking, like, I was thinking of the scene where the girlfriend spreads her flaps. And, like, it reminded me of uh, when Predator opened his mouth. And, like, I would rather put my dick in that. 
Although, have you, if you've seen mm. the guy who plays Predator in Prey, he's quite cute. Anyway. Um, and you uh, like the original Predator actor. Van Damme. Yes. Yeah. You definitely yeah. plant your seed in that rosebud. Maybe. <laughs> who says you haven't already? Mm-hmm. Well, it was a uh-huh. experience. It was an experience. Thank you for having that, me. That, that it was. <laughs> well, thank you for participating. Um, yeah. Well, this is something that we uh, can cross off the list. Yes. Because you know? I wanted been to do it for a while. That I You've done do it. A, I wanted to do a porno movie. We've done it. Now let's move on with our lives. Yes. Let's forget right. this chapter so, like the mother and son did. <laughs> mm-hmm, <laughs> let's just pretend mm-hmm. it never happened. It will be fine. <laughs> it never happened. Yes. What we did yeah. was wrong, Greener Brenton. pastures. <laughs> yes. There's a word for it. It's called incest. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, that was wheezy. Yes. Okay. You better go take care of that. Yes. Um, so, yep, I want to thank everybody for listening. I want to thank Tony for joining me. So we're going to put a pin in this episode, but come back next week for more juicy, non-sexual coated goodness. Mm. Oh, well, okay. If you insist. All right, everybody, until next time, this is Brandon Ford wishing you all unpleasant dreams. <laughs>